Paris is a dream destination for many of us. The sites are amazing, the food is scrumptious, and there are a lot of scams that you need to be aware of. So in this video, we're gonna tell you what they are, where they are, and specifically how to avoid them altogether, and what to do if it happens. Paris is a safe place, so why are we talking about scams? Because they're here and they're happening, and you need to know about it. And the odds are in your favor that these things will never happen to you, but Paris is a big touristic city. And like any big city where you have people who are distracted with cash and cameras and bags from shopping, you're gonna find people who wanna take advantage of that. Opportunists go where they see opportunity. Now there's no reason to be afraid, but we do want you to be aware. We want you to know what's going on so you can recognize it, avoid it, keep off their radar, or know what to do if someone engages. So where are the scams happen in Paris or in all the major tourist attractions? So the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, the Champs Elysees, Le Louvre Museum, or all the places around, and Montmartre, the Sacré-Cœur and Place du Théâtre, and the Metro. Now, other places where we're usually more alert are like big train stations or places that are very crowded where people are standing shoulder to shoulder. So places like Gare de Lyon, Gare du Nord, those are the places where we're gonna be more alert. People have told me they felt really stupid when they got scammed, but you have to know it's not about smart or dumb. Scammers are looking for a few things when they choose who they want to target, and this is what they're looking for. Obviously, they're looking for people who look like they have something worth taking, like tourists with cash and cameras and things. They want anything they can sell. They're looking for people who are distracted, or people that they could easily distract while their partner is working on the blind side. And they're looking for people that they expect to be nice or helpful, the kind of people who won't make a scene or call attention to what's going on. They want people who are likely to be embarrassed and not speak up. Another thing that I hear when people are giving advice about this is don't look like a tourist. Well, good luck with that because you are a tourist. But the first thing I'll tell you about not looking like a tourist is don't wear a beret. Go ahead and buy one. Wear it while you're taking your pictures, but put it away and don't wear them walking around. Parisians don't wear berets. French people wear comfortable shoes, simple wardrobe items that can interchange, and they avoid flashy colors. The bright stuff in the wardrobe usually comes in as accessories. And for the most part, they're very sensible, practical, and discreet people. Which brings me to the last characteristic I wanna mention. French people tell me that they often identify American as the ones being loud. So if you don't want to look like a tourist, use a soft voice. And those are some great ways to look like the kind of person that a scammer doesn't want. Now the types of scams and thefts that you're going to find in Paris will vary from location to location. Here are the top scams you might find. Number one is the pickpockets and they are pretty much everywhere. But more specifically in the metro in line one and in line four, which are the two main metro lines that are crisscrossing Paris and going through the main attractions. Now the next thing you're going to see are fake taxis and those are in the airport and in the train station. The way they play that game is they're inside or just outside the door and they say, hey, do you want a taxi? And if you say yes, next thing you know, they're whisking you away to the car and they're taking you off. The problem is they're not real taxi and they want cash only and they're going to ask you for two times or three times the amount that a regular taxi would charge you. Taxis are always and only an, an official taxi stand. Not a single official taxi will ever solicit you inside the train station or inside the airport. Just say no and go to an official line where you'll get a real taxi. And there is a flat rate from the airport or from a train station to any big destination in Paris. So make sure to look for the taxi stand. And if it doesn't have the taxi name on top of the car, it's a fake one. Just walk away, get your luggage and walk away. Now the next scam is people selling fake tickets and it's a big problem specifically at Le Louvre but also all the big attractions around Paris and the good news is it just arrested 14 people at Le Louvre that were selling fake tickets. Look, there's no other way to say it but don't ever, ever, ever buy a ticket from someone in the street. Only buy them at the official website or at the official booth at the attraction. 
Now, another scam that we've heard from people is the Tuk Tuk's that will have a tendency to change the price according to who they're dealing with. Like for example, you know, 15 sounds a lot like 50. So they'll say 15, 15. And then you get in and once you get to your destination, they're like, oh no, it's 50. That's what I said, it's 50. Or they'll say, no, it was 15 per person. So you got in thinking it was 15 for the ride, but it was 15 per person. Now it's three of you, it's 45 euros. It's a total different ball game. So that's another type of scam that you're going to get. Here's the deal. Deal. Negotiate the price before, make sure you know exactly how much is going to be to your destination. And if it gets confrontational or they pretend they don't speak English, just walk away. Next, you'll see a lot of fake survey takers, specifically around Montmartre and around the Eiffel Tower. It's just people walking about with a clipboard and asking you to sign and just give a couple of euros for a good cause. Now, hear me out. There is no official organization in France or in Paris that will go at a main attraction and ask for money. Full stop. If you give it to them, you're making a donation to whoever that person is working for which is not a nonprofit organization. I can guarantee you that. It's a scam. Just walk away with a firm no. Now the next scam that we've heard is restaurants in the touristic areas that are overcharging for stuff. Like they're overcharged for coffee or beverages or they'll upsell to the most expensive product that they have on their menu. Look, it just happened to us last week. We were with some friends from out of town. We stopped at a cafe near Palais Royale and we ordered four glasses of champagne and the waiter asked small or big and our guest said four big ones and then next thing we knew we had a 92 euro tab for four large glasses of champagne. That was a little stiff. And I was disappointed that I got caught in that one, but that's how easy it is to get caught up in a silly scam. Now, next time you're in a restaurant and you order for something, make sure to ask them combien, which means how much. So you get the price before you order it. Another one that we've heard is the little bracelets that they will do specifically around Montmartre. They'll tie a little bracelet around your wrist and then next thing you know, you have to pay five, 10 euros. They'll tell you it's free, but then you have to pay for something for a good cause. It's a scam. They're trying to get you, but once they have your wrist and they have this thing, which is impossible to take out, by the way, unless you cut it, but you don't have scissors with you, so you feel obligated to pay. It's usually not much as five, 10 euros, but you feel taken and again, it's a scam. And the last one is the three cup trick where they're moving the cup and you have to find out where the ball is and you gamble. Look, it's a scam. You're not going to win. They're gonna let you win a couple of times and they're gonna take all your money. You see that usually around the Eiffel Tower, uh, sometime around Montmartre, and I've seen it pretty much all over the world. So it's the same scam that's working out there. Just walk away, you're not gonna win. Now here's what you need to know. Most scams in Paris are non-violent. All they want is your money. They are very quick and it's a split second and they're are gone before you know it. And remember, they don't want to be caught and they don't want to be seen. They'll avoid conflict and they'll run away if it gets too much attention. They really want your cash or your valuables. That's it. Now know that most of these scammers work in teams. They're never alone. One will try to distract you while the other one is trying to take your stuff. You also have groups of kids, but mostly teenagers that are roaming the metro and that are looking to take advantage of people. They're extremely skillful at the arts of distraction. So if you see that, just be very careful and walk away. Here's a solid tip for you. Avoid trying to buy a metro ticket in a busy touristic metro station. Buy them in advance in a small station away from the big attractions. You'll feel a lot less vulnerable that way. Trust me. The same goes with taking cash out of an ATM. Avoid the big touristic area for ATM machines. If you're confronted with any of the scams that I talked to you about, make a lot of noise or just simply walk away. Now, if you're confronted with a scam or a witness to one, here's what you need to know and the things that you can do. My grandma used to carry this whistle with her at all time when she was in Paris. And she told me that she used it only twice, but both times she scared the crap out of the person that was looking for trouble. It scared the person so bad that they ran away as fast as they could. Thieves and scammers don't want to be caught or be seen and they will avoid confrontation if they can. If you find yourself in a situation, make a scene, scream, blow a whistle. This will alert any authority that is nearby and get everybody to look at you, also known as eyewitnesses. Under no circumstances should you get physical with them. 
because you may be charged with assault. A thief can always deny that they were stealing. He or she can say that they found it or that they were returning it. They have to be caught with the hand in the cookie jar. And if they're caught, most of the time, they'll just drop it on the floor and they say, that wasn't me. Now the self-defense law in France are very strict. You can't just beat up someone on the suspicion of theft. Even if you saw it, you need to let the police do their job. So here are a few numbers to remember. With a mobile phone, just dial 112 and ask for an English speaking operator. For the police directly, dial 17 and for medical emergency, dial 15. Now another thing that I would recommend is to start video recording on your phone what's going on. I don't recommend putting your phone in people's face but have a record of what was said and what happened. Always best not to engage and escalate the situation. It's always best to walk away. Escalation leads to violence and that's never a good thing. Now another thing I recommend is don't make eye contact with scammers but let them know you know they're there. And remember that you cannot detain them and you you should avoid physical contact at all costs. Let the police handle it. Well, that does it for today. Remember, Paris is a safe city. Be aware, be alert, and take care and have some fun. So until next time, au revoir. Au revoir.